Hello guys, welcome to the concepts and analysis series and this is your case number 2. So here we have a 17 year old contact lens wearer. There is something which strikes our mind as soon as you hear the contact lens wearer. Okay, keep that in mind. Contact lens wearer developed the pain, redness, photophobia and decreased visual acuity in the right eye 2 days ago. So something which is very very acute leading to the signs of inflammation, we have pain, we have redness, we have photophobia, diminution of the vision in the right eye 2 days, right? Now she states that she cares for and cleans her lenses meticulously, wears them no more than 8 hours a day. So basically they are ruling out that there is no over wear syndrome. They are trying to rule uh, rule this out that there is no over wear syndrome. She is taking good care. She is not wearing more than 8 hours a day. She does admit of being on the camp for 3 days about 2 weeks ago. But she did go for a camp that is about 2 weeks ago and figure given below is in her left eye. Now, which of the following regarding this condition is true? So, you have to find out the true statement regarding the diagnosis that you have made from the history given and the picture given. So, this is what do you mean by the conceptual and analytical. First, you should have the concepts of making the diagnosis from the given scenario and then we try to analyze it. Only then I will be able to tell you that which of the following statements is true. So, uh, have you understood the difference between the clinic? case scenarios and the concepts and analytical questions. In the clinical case scenarios, you are given a clinical scenario, a picture and you were required to make the diagnosis. But here, not only you have to make a diagnosis, based on that diagnosis, you have to analyze and see which of the following statements is true. Now, see the picture also because whatever you have got from the question is that you are having something very very acute and that acute was having the inflammation. So we have got that there is some acute inflammation after the contact lens wearing. So that means we are thinking about keratitis. We are thinking about keratitis or the corneal ulcer. Now, after the contact lens, what type of uh, keratitis are we suspecting? So, you know, most common infection is by pseudomonas. So, we can think about the pseudomonas. And uh, we also know that the most common uh, risk factor which occurs in acanthamoeba keratitis is also the use of contact lenses. So, I can also think about acanthamoeba, acanthamoeba keratitis. So, these are the two things that I will think of when I am reading this question before seeing the picture. Now, having seen this picture, can you see a typical ring infiltrate? So, this is actually called as the ring infiltrate. So, you are getting a typical ring infiltrate ring abscess kind of thing and this is going in the favor of the acanthamoeba keratitis. So keeping this in mind that this person was using the contact lens fine. Now because they have already said if you see that she was using her lenses meticulously, she was not wearing them 8 hours a day, she was taking care of them. So, a sort of like we are ruling out the pseudomonas because pseudomonas growth we are expecting when the patient is having, you know, uh, less of the personal hygiene regarding the contact lenses. Now, though acanthamoeba keratitis can also occur, but in a way we can rule this out. Second important thing, when we are having the ring infiltrate, that is surely very, very suggestive of acanthamoeba keratitis. So, on this basis, now let us try to see the options. First is patient complains of a dull aching pain. Number two is enlarged corneal nerves are pathonomic. Number three, these organisms grow best in the thioglycolate broth. And number four, this simple mechanical debridement may be curative when confined to the corneal epithelium. Now, <coughs> you have to find out <coughs> that which of the following statements is true. 
so first let's discuss about uh, the acanthamoeba keratitis and then we'll come to know which of the statements is true so if i talk about the acanthamoeba keratitis right what is happening what is this acanthamoeba it is actually a free living amoeba it is nothing but a free living amoeba and this free living amoeba is found in the soil so how this amoeba which is actually present in the soil how it manages to enter the eye so this is actually coming through the contact lenses so from here we get this that how it is reaching the eye with the help of contact lenses so when we are washing these contact lenses with the muddy water muddy water or the soiled water or we are using the tap water right or we are using the homemade saline solutions or uh, if you are using you know contaminated solutions expired solutions so this is a very very important way how actually this amoeba is reaching the eye so once it is going inside the eye even one confusing thing also happens this can also take place when we have got the trauma when we have got the trauma with the vegetative matter when we have trauma with the vegetative matter so if i have trauma with the vegetative matter usually what comes in mind is the fungal keratitis what comes in mind is the fungal keratitis but here even you can think about acanthamoeba because this vegetative matter may be soiled so if it is soiled then you can think about acanthamoeba so what happens um, actually this is having a lot of confusing clinical profiles and that is why mostly when they are giving you a question usually they give on fungal or, or acanthamoeba because they have lot of signs which are also confusing now what happens this acanthamoeba has got two stages one is a cystic stage one is a trophozoite stage so it is the trophozoite stage it is the trophozoite stage zoid uh, stage which is considered to be the active phase now what happens this trophozoid stage it actually resembles something so these are resembling the macrophages these trophozoites are resembling the macrophages and that is why when you see this it looks as if it is a case of the bacterial keratitis it looks as if it is a case of the bacterial keratitis so i have told you why it is confusing with the fungal keratitis and why it is confusing with the bacterial keratitis also another important thing is that it is also giving me the pseudo dendritic pattern it is also giving me the pseudo dendritic pattern now do you remember what were uh, dendrites what were dendrites we were having the tree like arborizing pattern something like this we were having the knobs so basically the dendrites are always you know very very uh, specific this dendritic pattern is very very specific of what the dendrites are specific of herpes simplex keratitis and herpes simplex keratitis is viral okay but here what happens in cases of acanthamoeba we can have pseudo dendritic where you do not have these knobs you do not have these knobs so you just have the arborizing pattern but uh, we do not have the knobs kind of a thing so it is something like this that you are having okay so if you are having the pseudo dendritic pattern then this can be uh, found in uh, you know acanthamoeba also the pseudo dendritic pattern can be found in acanthamoeba and even in herpes zoster also we get the pseudo dendritic pattern so that is why you are confusing it with the viral keratitis so i have shown you the confusing feature with bacterial with viral as well as fungal so how will you get to make the diagnosis so if you are confused and uh, you have this idea that this person is having the uh, contact lens used but what to do it is looking like uh, macrophages are present it is also showing you dendritic like pattern then uh, it is also having the uh, vegetative matter growth 
trauma. So what you can do, you can actually check it with the growth. You can check the growth on the non-nutrient agar. Growth on non-nutrient agar, I can see, which is enriched with the E. coli. So growth on the non-nutrient agar which is enriched with the E. coli, this is very, very diagnostic. So even if you are getting so many things by which you are not able to make the diagnosis, if you are getting the growth on this, this is very, very diagnostic. So this means that if you see the option number C that they were saying that the growth on thioglycolate broth, that is wrong. Now, if you look about the clinical features, now, every corneal ulcer is presenting in a different way and they have got something different in the clinical profile. Like if I talk about the bacterial, okay, in the bacterial keratitis, the symptoms are always much more than the signs. So, their pain is an important thing and mostly the patients of bacterial keratitis are presenting because of pain, photophobia and redness and all. And there will be a single ulcer. I will not have the multiple ulcer there. On the other hand, if you see the fungal keratitis, if you have the fungal keratitis, it is uh, other way around. Here the signs are much more than the symptoms. Here the signs are much, much more than the symptoms and uh, basically, you know, it is a kind of ulcer which is asymptomatic, which is asymptomatic and here you will have the multiple satellite lesions. Here you will have the multiple satellite lesions, okay, and it is a dry looking ulcer, then it is grayish ulcer. So, all these things are there. Now, on the other hand, if I talk about the viral keratitis, if I talk about the viral keratitis, you will always have decreased corneal sensations. You will have the presence of the keratic precipitates. You will have the dendritic or the pseudodendritic pattern. So, these are the things that we are looking for if we have the viral keratitis. Now, finally, if I talk about the acanthamoeba. So, if I am talking about the uh, acanthamoeba keratitis, what is the important thing? So, very, very important is pain is out of proportion. Pain is out of proportion to the size of the ulcer. If you look in the cases of acanthamoeba keratitis, Pain is a very, very important feature. You cannot neglect this and when you examine this patient, you will not see that large also. So, pain is much, much more in comparison that you are going to expect in such a small ulcer along with the contact lens use. Second important thing that you are going to get here is the radial keratoneuritis. Another important thing that you are going to get in these cases is the radial keratoneuritis. Radial, radial, why radial? Because you know cornea contains the nerves in a radial fashion. So suppose these are the nerves that I am getting, okay. So this is the nerves. Now kerato means the cornea. And neuritis. So basically, I am having inflammation which is present in the radial fashion. So nerves are having inflammation and you know neural pain is always worse pain. So you get what you call as um, enlarged corneal nerves. You will get the enlarged corneal nerves, okay, but it is not pathonomic. You will, you will get the enlargement of the corneal nerves, but it is not pathonomic. Okay, and why I am getting? It is due to the inflammation that I am getting and slowly and gradually what I get in the last is your ring abscess or the infiltrate that is the final thing that we get. What happens in the case of acanthamoeba keratitis? Actually, suppose this is the surface of the cornea. So, acanthamoeba manages to remain on the surface of the cornea, okay, between the contact lens and the cornea. So, it is actually, you know, doing 
the uh, its pathology all over the cornea so what is happening we have got whole lot of uh, radial keratoneuritis and ultimately whole of the cornea is involving the ring shaped abscess so the typical ring infiltrate that you get in the cases of acanthamoeba keratitis is very very typical now last but not the least if i talk about the treatment so usually we give a combination of uh, propamidine propamidine along with the phmb that is your poly hexa methylene by guanide polyhexa methylene by guanide you are giving a combination now many times when you see the uh, question in the options they are not giving the combination then it's always better if you have to choose one then go with the polyhexa methylene by guanide and uh, if these things are failing okay then uh, we can go for the simple debridement because you know a lot of debris is present so we can go for the debridement and if this is failing even we can go for penetrating keratoplasty or the corneal transplantation so this was all about um, the acanthamoeba keratitis and also comparing features with the other keratitis now on this basis if you come back to the question here what you are getting first of all they are saying patients complain of dull aching pain so absolutely wrong pain is out of the proportion of the size of the ulcer so this is outstandingly wrong number 2 we have got the enlarged corneal nerve so again this is wrong i told you you are getting the enlarged corneal nerves due to the radial keratoneuritis but it is not the pathonomic feature number 3 these organisms grow uh, grow best in the thioglycolate broth so this is again wrong i told you that they are growing on a non nutrient agar enriched with e coli so that means even if you do not know anything about the option number d your answer will be d and this is the beauty of excluding the uh, options and getting the right answer now let's see the option number 4 simple mechanical debridement may be curative when it is confined to the corneal epithelium so absolutely correct i told you that uh, if the medical management is not doing fine and you are finding that it is just in the epithelium i can do the debridement but if it is going to the deeper layers i will have to do the corneal transplantation so i i hope you have understood this topic uh, by the you know uh, help of this concepts and analysis series i think you will be able to uh, strengthen up your concepts you will be able to compare the things because most of the times what happens we are actually uh, struggling between the two options so how to actually get that struggle over and we be very very sure that this only is the right answer is to have the strong concepts so i hope you understood the topic well and got clear your concepts in case of any doubt you can always follow me on all the uh, social media platforms uh, for uh, seeing more such videos and to remain um, uh, informed about it do subscribe the channel so that you get the uh, notification of all the latest videos you can also follow me on uh, insta we have got a huge family on the telegram group and facebook uh, group uh, you can be a member of that we are sharing lot of academic and motivational stuff and uh, we are in the times to go i am planning so many things so you can be a part of it you can also be a part of the daily quiz that we are conducting on our telegram group uh, for the links uh, they will be present in the description also for uh, especially if i talk about uh, the telegram group that is a very very active group more than 25k people are there who are uh, actually participating in the quiz daily uh, uh, in the evening we are conducting it at uh, such a timing so that you people are free from your classes so we are uh, we are doing these uh, quizzes after 10 pm because uh, uh, that was a demand of the students that uh, they are busy in the classes till 10 pm so we are doing it that on a pre given and decided topic just 10 questions so the idea is to keep you in touch with the topic so that uh, when you are having your papers delayed your neat uh, pg is delayed you are not getting out of touch so that is a small effort from our side to keep you in touch with the ophthalmology thank you and a happy ophthalmology